Today's painting is going to be a view over the sweeping fields of England. So let's begin with a basic sketch. And we start about halfway, a little bit less than halfway. And let's make an undulating line. Now there are going to be a few fields below here. So just create a few lines. But we'll create a lot more of these just with our paintbrush. In order to give the impression of uh, hedgerows in the fields, if you also have a line that slightly slopes up, follow the line down and then move across this line and create another one here. Don't join them up as a cross because it doesn't quite work. We need another line coming this way, which will be the edge of the wheat field. And just to remind me here, we're going to have a mighty oak tree. So we'll just put in a little suggestion of the trunk there. And the canopy will come above the horizon line. That pretty much is going to be enough that we need for our sketch. I prepared some beautiful colours here from the tubes that you just saw. Um, I need to add a touch of water here to the red, but I want that red to be quite strong because this can be for the, the poppies. Now, I've also prepared a little bit of cobalt blue here. If I add this amount of red to the blue, we should get a sort of purplish color. If it's not purple enough, add a little bit more red. Always add the red to the blue. Let's see how that is. A little bit more lilac -y purple there. And you just keep on adding until you get the shade of colour. Add a little bit of water as well. Add it to that. And yes, it's getting lighter now. A lighter purple. That will do for the distant hills. I've also prepared a dark green with yellow and some Payne's grey. That's the black looking colour. A lighter green and this is yellow with a touch of the light red in it here. Okay let's begin. We're going to use a technique you may be familiar with. If not it's called wet onto wet. So all I'm going to do is simply wet the sky area. That's three scoops of clean water the area for the sky. Just using the flat side of my brush. Let's take some cobalt blue. This is a very strong colour so we'll see. Let's just test it first on my test piece. Yes that's quite strong. If you want it lighter add a little bit more water to it but that'll do because it's going to dilute. You may notice that I'm using the flat side of the brush. Just blending the colour along, making it an undulating line because it's going to be the tops of clouds. Here we've got the top of the clouds. Okay, let's carry on down a little bit more colour on my brush. Leave a space and then just wiggle the brush again if you want the clouds to join together, simply let the blue meet. Here I'm just using the very tip of the brush so that we get some linear, sort of linear aspect to the very, very distant clouds. That 
is looking really good. Give myself a little bit of encouragement. Here, this harsh line, I've just made my brush damp and clean. I'll blend that in just a touch. Just, it's all about the delicacy of the touch, particularly for the distance. I think that's looking beautiful. Um, if I was to take a tiny, tiny amount of my, perhaps my purple, I'm making a very diluted version here, very diluted purple. And I might try, let's test it first. Yes, that's very dilute. I might try and put a tiny touch of the purple underneath the cloud, underneath the base of the cloud, and blend that in gently, just to give a little suggestion of 3D. That it's a little bit, a little bit shadowy underneath. Let's do some on this one. It's a small, just a touch, tiny touch of the purple. Or you could use Payne's Grey, if you wish. But there's no water hardly on my brush. I'm letting the paint do the job for me. Could even do a little bit of purple under these distant clouds as they roll the rolling forward, exactly the same as a wave in the ocean, they're rolling forward. So in the distance, these clouds look a lot smaller as they're further away. Got to remember to take a breath because sometimes while we're painting, we tend to hold our breath. That's looking good now. Got the illusion of the cloud with the shadow under the base of the cloud, but leaving white at the top. Now, I can give a suggestion here, and that is practice this. Practice this on spare paper, because it does take a little bit of practice. It's easier to do this, I find, in acrylic paint, because you can blend the colours together. And talking of acrylic paints, I am planning on posting an acrylic class very soon. It's the 1st of January today, so Happy New Year to you for the 1st of January 2024. And I will be posting some acrylics very soon. I've just got to get myself into the frame of mind, as we all do as artists. Let's carry on down now. I'm going to introduce some purple for the distant hills. Now, you may be thinking, why purple? Why not green? Well, believe it or not, the area I'm painting now, which is coming out as a purple colour, will in fact be blue, but light and the blue spectrum of light shows easiest in our atmosphere. So the distance appears to be purple, purplish blue. But when in fact you get there, those hills, if they're not covered, covered with heather, those hills will be green or yellow or beige. Now I'm washing my brush and I'm introducing a little bit of my light green. Go right over the pencil. Go right over the tree trunk. It really does not matter because we can still see. And I have made my pencil a little bit stronger for you to see. I'm also cleaning my brush again and this time I'm adding a little bit of slightly more brighter yellow in here. Mix that in with my green. It 
Yes, I'm happy with that. And what I'm going to do now is even if you find little areas of white, little flecks of white, leave them. I think they look quite effective. I think they look more natural. Okay, the foreground then. So in the foreground I'm going to introduce a lot brighter yellow in the foreground here. And before this dries here, I'm going to introduce a little bit of light uh, green, this one, which I need to mix around because the blue sinks to the bottom very quickly. And I'm also going to introduce a little bit of the darker green, but it's just going to be little dots and dashes so that the colour runs and bleeds together. Little dots and dashes there, some little dots and dashes here. I think in the foreground we're going to have a fence, a little fence, um, keeping the cattle in. We'll put that fence in there later. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the darker green, mix it round. And just the tip of the brush, just a little bit of darker green here and there. That's looking good, I'm happy with that. I'm now swapping over to my number three fine pointed brush because I can now start to do some detail in the middle ground here. It's dry, it's quite dry enough now. I'm just standing up at this moment. I've been sitting, but now I'm standing just to be able to check how my painting's progressing. Yes, it's looking good. Okay. Taking a little bit of my stronger purple, mixing it around. It's rather like a very fine pen, and I'm wiping a little bit off on my tissue. And going to introduce some fine, fine distant lines. These really are very, very fine because they're representing the hedgerows, some shadows maybe. You'll know from listening to my other videos that I always say that all painting is an illusion. And it is. We're just creating the illusion of distant fields in perspective. Now I've swapped over to a darker colour. And just a very fine tip of the brush. Try some undulating lines. Maybe there are a few distant trees which I'm creating just by doing dots. Very fine, very, very fine dots, particularly the ones that are further away. Maybe the trees get a little bit bigger here. Don't worry about the tree here, that's going to be painted later. So we'll just paint through that tree at the moment. Introduce some more beautiful hedgerows, hawthorn bushes, little trees. I 
Have you noticed that the base of the trees is quite straight as a, as a sort of a, an edge? And it's the top, it's this part I'm painting now that is more undulating. So keep the base of that line or edge, keep it rather straight. It may be on an angle, but it's still straight. As we get further forward then, the hedgerows will look a bit larger. You may also notice that I try to keep my paintbrush pointing at me so that the actual trees are straight up. Even the little tiny bushes, they are straight. Give the illusion of being straight up, not all leaning over. Now, be brave and along this edge here, just bring a blend of dark green. So that's that band I was talking about that is though it's undulating, it's still rather straight. And now I could use some swapping over to a little bit of medium green here and dot 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 dash 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 introduce some lighter green or medium green and now I'll swap and add some of the deeper green now here the yellow field was a little bit wet, but I quite like that effect. I like the way that the colour is slightly running down. Let your painting have a little bit of it, its own way. It's like, it's like how we are as human beings. We like to have a little bit of our own way. Very, very fine, very, very fine hedgerows, creating the illusion. Remember, it's not a cross. The hedgerow comes, then down, then it goes and continues on. So you'll get that illusion that you need. Okay, let's continue then. Should we paint the tree? I'm going to start with some of my lighter green and it's simply going to be dot 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 and I'm going to let the dot dot dots go above the horizon line. It's a mighty oak tree. It's been there for 125 years. I have a little bit of Payne's Grey here, like the black looking colour. Maybe it's in a lot of summer shadow. So we might put a little bit of the Payne's Grey in there, right down to the roots. I'm going to let the darker green now, which is this one, I'm going to let that be introduced to the beautiful summer canopy. There are some branches almost reaching their way down, down to the beautiful fields. The cattle often go under this tree, shade from the summer sun. I'm tempted to keep on working on this, but do you know, I think, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm allowing some of the distant landscape to show through the tree. So that was just dot, 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 dot with the tip of my brush, dot, dot, dot. Let's move forward, shall we, towards the base of the painting. 
Just checking if that's dry. Yes, this seems to be dry because it's not shining anymore. So I could start to introduce the fence post that I spoke about. Now, you could either just use a pencil, which works quite well. If you're feeling a little bit nervous and you want to just use pencil, this is a 2B pencil, so it's quite soft. It's a quite a soft pencil. And in the tradition of watercolour painting, one is allowed to see pencil. Trying to make one side here just a little bit lighter. Oh, this one here, it's leaning over. It's a little bit of an old piece of... That looks good. And still staying with the pencil, what if I was to take a... a line through the posts? This is the wire to keep the cattle in. Now, les touches finales. The final touch. Back to my small brush. I'm going to introduce some poppies into the field. So this is my lovely cadmium red deep. I like the cadmium red deep because it's a good solid red colour. And I think we'll just have... Again, dot, 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 fine dots of colour of these poppies. There are some far away in this field here. And as the poppies appear to get a little bit closer, they appear a little larger. But I'm not trying to do poppy seeds as well. I'm just trying to do poppy heads. How tiny can you make these? Far up, on the far side of the field. And now, the very, very last of all, taking some of my deeper green again, and I'm going to just, from the base of the painting, I'm going to flick upwards in this direction, just flicking up, gently touching the paper. Don't want too much pressure on the brush, hardly touching the paper, just letting the stalks or the grasses just make the way up the painting. Maybe there are just a few at the base here and the poppies. I like some coming in from the side there. Well, once again, I'm really enjoying this. It's helping me to feel calm and relaxed. A little bit of mindfulness, a little bit of time to withdraw from the cares that will not withdraw from us. So we have to withdraw from those cares and give ourselves a little bit of a break, a little bit of creating this perfect world where everything is safe where we are safe, where everything looks good and wonderful. It would be great if life was like that. Just very gently picking out that fence line here, very, very gently. So it just gives us there. I think I'm going to stop because if I do any more, it's going to be ruined. But what I do want to do, I'm going to take the 
tape off. Normally, I would allow this to dry for an hour or two, even overnight, I would allow it to dry. But I have a little mount that I just want to try on my painting and see what it looks like. Remove the board. Let's zoom back a little bit, shall we? And we may be able to see what the mount looks like. Here's my mount coming in. Wow, what a difference that can make once we put the mount on. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed it. Please have a try yourself, have a little bit of relaxation and I will look forward to perhaps trying to recreate this painting in acrylic. I'm certainly going to have a try and create it as a short, a 60 second. I might do that next, so keep watching. Best wishes everyone and happy painting.